Hello there, I'm Eric Renault, and this is a video for tipsquirrel.com. It's a free website for all things Photoshop, Lightroom, and anything else we find interesting. In this video, I'm going to be making a couple of Lego-inspired building blocks, and I'm going to make a one by one block, and then a little bit later, a two by four block, and we're going to add some inside gubbins to the two by four, just to make it a little bit more realistic. Gonna take both those blocks and then we're going to put them into a 3D scene using Adobe Felix. All right, let's jump into Photoshop and see what's what. So here I am in Photoshop and this is a one by one brick similar to the one that we're gonna to create today, but you'll notice here that there are some dimensions on this. Now I'm gonna be referring to this and I'll also make this available on tipsquirrel.com where this video is posted. All right, so you can see that all the dimensions are in millimeters, but I'm gonna actually create mine in centimeters and then scale it down. But as long as I've got the ratio correct, everything should look good. Okay, let's go into File and New, and I'm gonna create a new document that's big enough to take my new block, that's 12 centimeters by 12 centimeters, 300 pixels per inch, and click Create. Now I'm gonna be making this block as if I'm looking down uh, from the top, as it were. So first things first, I want to make the square. So I'm gonna come over to my shape tool and choose the rectangular tool. And I'm using Photoshop CC, which means I can click down and I can create it here. If you're using an earlier version of Photoshop, you're gonna to have to draw it out and then uh, readjust the dimensions. So here I'm gonna go eight centimeters by eight centimeters and then click OK, and there it is. Now if I select all, and then I come up to my move tool, I can then centralize that just like that. Control D to deselect. Now I should warn you, if you're not familiar with working with Photoshop and indeed with 3D, you might struggle a little bit, but feel free to click the pause button if I'm going a little bit too fast. Okay, I'm gonna call this lid, there we go. And then I'm gonna make a duplicate of that, Control or Command J, to duplicate the layer. And I'm gonna call this one box. There we go. Now for box, what I want is the inside of the brick itself. So if I go back to my piece here, you can see that this is what I'm gonna be creating. So this is 1.6 millimeters, 1.6 centimeters in my case. So I'm gonna turn off the fill, go onto my stroke and add the color in. And I'm gonna change this uh, to 1.6 centimeters. There we go, done. Now I need the knob that goes on the top and looking back at my drawing here, you can see this is 4.8 millimeters. So again, I can go over to my shape tools, ellipse, click down, and this is 4.8, in my case, centimeters by 4.8 centimeters. There we go. Now, I don't want uh, any stroke on this, but I do want a fill. There we go, and let's go Control A, and then pop everything in the middle. There we go, everything goes in the middle. And what we should find is that that will sit in the middle, but it doesn't, why not? This must be the uh, case here. So I've got my stroke here of one centimeter. <clears throat> That's not good. Um, I wanted it to be 1.4, 1.6, so we want to go 1.6 here, 1.6 centimeters. There we go, and that's how it should look. The circle should sit with inside the box itself. Okay, good. I'm gonna call this one knob. There we go, good. All right, finally I want to put some text on the top. So I'm gonna go and get my text tool, and I'm gonna to click down, and then I'm gonna call this brick, but obviously you can put whatever you want. Again, select all. Control A, and then pop that right in the middle as well. There we go. Control D to deselect. I'm all ready to go. That's all the components I need for a one by one brick. Now comes a bit of making it into three dimensions. So let's turn them all off and turn on lid and select that as a layer. And then in 3D, depending on how you want to work, I like to use the 3D panel and extrude from here. You can also extrude from the 3D menu here as well. 3D extrusion, create. And then what that's gonna do is it's gonna extrude it out, you can see by eight centimeters, that's not what I want. Um, so if we go back, 
you can see that it's an eight centimeter or eight millimeter block, but then there's an extra bit, which is our lid. So uh, if we take eight away from the 9.6, we've got 1.6, which is the same as all these, of course. So we've got 1.6 centimeters. Okay, so here we go, 1.6 centimeters. There we go, and now we've got the lid. Let's go and do the box now. Let's extrude that in exactly the same way. This time it does want to be eight centimeters, so that's bang on. Then the knob, let's extrude that one. And this wants to be uh, 1.6. So we can go 1.6. There we go. And then finally the brick or the text, I can extrude that and I want it to be smaller than 1.6. So uh, I can do this as 1.16 is fine or oh, one centimeter will work well here. There we go, all right. So now I've got all my bits in three dimensions. I'm just gonna uh, close these up just to do a little bit of housekeeping here. There we go, just so it's easy to see. Select brick, shift and select lid. So all my components are now selected. Go to 3D and merge 3D layers. And they're all gonna be put into one scene, which means they're gonna interact with each other. Now the top here, I've got my top down view, but if I click and go top, I can sort of centralize it all. And you can see at the moment it's eight centimeters square, which is perfect, exactly as I wanted to see it. If you haven't got this top down view or this view at all, if you go to view and then show, and then you need the 3D secondary view. This is gonna be very helpful to us. In our 3D panel, I can have a look. Uh, let's tidy these up again. I've got the lid, I've got box, knob, brick each with their own individual camera, but we'll sort that out in just a little while. So here I want to go for lid. So if I pull the lid forward now, we'll be able to see it appear on our top down. But these dimensions here will change as well. So what we're looking for isn't the eight, it's the 9.6 that we're looking for. And I wanna get this as close as I possibly can. It's a bit tricky doing it like this, but hey, enjoy it. If anything, I want to be too low. There we go, 9.6. So I know now, I'm quite confident that that's gonna sit flush. All right, let's go to the next bit, which is the knob. And let's pull that out. There we go, and I can use exactly the same technique here. So I want it to be around about 11.2. There we go, that'll do me. And then finally, let's get the brick, pull that out. Let's go top down, see how we're doing. I just want this just to very slightly appear at the top. Just very, very slight. There we go, that'll do me fine. So there we go. That's our brick all done. What we need to do now is to put this all as one object and that's really easy to do. So with our layer selected in our 3D panel, if I select lid and then control or command on box, knob and brick. They're now all selected, all the parts. I can then right click. And now you can see that group objects is not available, but that's what I want. Now, since the update of the Mac, this has been a little bit leery. So all I need to do is select that again, right click again, sure enough, there they are. Uh, let's click on that. And now they all go as part of one group. There it is. I'm gonna call this one by one and we can close that down. Let's go to current view. And again, this can be a bit weird. Uh, you can see that that is not the right icon for this uh, tab here. So if I go off it and come back on it, there you go. Again, this is since the uh, update in the Mac. And I can scooch around this and I can have a look and see exactly how it goes. Now you can see just maybe that it is see-through or it is hollow there. Um, there's no lighting on the back, so that makes it a little bit more difficult. There we go and I'm gonna go back to the default camera, just like that. And there we go. We've made a one by one brick, easy. Okay, I'm gonna send that out. So 3D, export layers, and I'm gonna export this as a wavefront OBJ. So I want this to be an object, and you can see it's just over eight centimeters there and 11.2. Click okay, and I'm gonna save this somewhere. Let's make a new folder. 
I'm going to call this uh, brick tip squirrel and create and then I'm going to call this one brick one by one and in fact I'm going to put this into a new folder as well because uh, it comes with a lot of layers all the materials and all that kind of stuff so I'll put that into a new folder brick one by one save off it goes it's done we've now created that all right, so a really easy, really, really easy way of creating a one by one brick. Now you can add textures to that or materials to that to your heart's content. It's really easy to do that here in Photoshop. So if I open this up and I open box, um, I can select the top one, shift and select the bottom one of all the materials and then just choose the material that I want. And in this case, I'll make it blue. There we go. And then let's go to the lid perhaps, so we can actually see something happening. There we go. And then make that blue as well. There we go. And you can see it's all coming together really easy. Now the reason why I'm not too worried about doing that here is I like to add the materials in Adobe Project Phoenix, which is where we're sort of heading towards. But if you want to stick with Photoshop, there you go. Now, if you want to then put this onto an image with a ground plane, then why not check out a previous video of mine of how to actually do that with inside Photoshop. Again, not worried about that here because I find it a lot easier in Project Phoenix. All right, I'm going to reset Photoshop here, go back to square one. I'll see you in just a second. Okay, I'm all ready to go now. And what I'm going to do is create a two by four brick. Now this is very similar to how we just created the one by one brick, so I won't go into too much detail, but we just have to do the maths. So uh, eight by eight by eight by eight, so it's gonna be 32 across and then 16 down. That's really the only difference, and then we have to duplicate the knobs. It's the inside bit that we really have to worry about. All right, I'm gonna to go to File and New, and uh, it's gonna be 32 centimeters across at least, so I'm gonna go 35, give me some wiggle room, and then it's gonna be 16 down. So I'm gonna go 20 again, just to give myself some wiggle room and create. All right, I'm gonna bowl through this as quickly as I can. Click down and go 32 centimeters by 16 centimeters. There we go. And of course, we're gonna call that one lid. Then we're gonna duplicate that and we're gonna call this one box. And again, we don't want any fill, but we do want the stroke on this one. Let's take off lid so we can see what we're doing. And again, this wants to be, I can never remember, this wants to be 1.6. So 1.6 centimeters. And we'll come onto the right layer this time, shall we? And we'll go 1.6 centimeters. Okay, good. Let's centralize those just so I can see what I'm doing. I'm trying to go a little bit too fast, I think. There we go. Select. So we've got lid and we've got box. Now we need the knobs. So again, I'm going to get my lips tool, click down, and I can remember that this is 4.8. 4 by 4.8. Click OK. And then no stroke, but I do want to fill. And I want to pop this right up against the edges here. So that wants to be sort of right along there. I'm going to zoom in just to make sure that I'm getting this right. There we go. And then use the arrow keys just to make sure that I nudged that up. Excuse me, that was my Wacom tablet. Okay, there we go. All right, good. All right, let's go zoom back out again. And now we've got a knob. But of course I need eight of these. So what I'm gonna do is press the Alt key and then with my move tool I can come along and go, that's two, hold down the shift just to go straight in a straight line, three, and then the fourth one, what I wanna do is bring that right the way across so it's nicely on the edge. Again, I'm gonna zoom in and just make sure that that is indeed the case. There we go, zoom back out again, select them all. And then with the move tool active, I can then go distribute them uh, evenly on the horizontal. There we go, good. And then control or command E will collapse them all into the same layer. And I can control or command J to duplicate those. 
and then just bring those down and pop them on the bottom there. Again, I'm going to zoom in just to make sure I'm about right. There we go. Okay, let's get some text in there. So again, I'm going to use the word brick. And I'm going to pop that one in the middle of this circle, just like so. Okay, and again, I can just duplicate that to my heart's content. It's two, that's three, and then make sure this fourth one is bang on. Good, and then select them all, make sure that they are all highlighted, and there we go. Good, and Control and Command E to pop them all together, Control and Command J, and then bring them down as well. There we go, easy as that. All right, I might want to take a little bit more time in that, maybe even select each circle individually and make sure that it's absolutely square bang in the middle. But for time here, I'll leave them as is. Let's pop those two together, and then we can pop the knobs together as well, if you excuse the expression. So let's go knobs, and then text. All right, good. So that's all our components together, but now we need those bits in the center that gives it that bit more authenticity. So it's made up of three circles with a line going down. Now this is gonna change depending on what age your brick is that you're using as a reference. Now this is the way that I seem to remember it from my childhood or maybe even my children's childhood, uh, but it may differ depending on when you remember looking at the bottom of a Lego brick. All right, let's go and get my circle here. Now, if I start to draw this out and then hold shift to constrain it, I can bring this up and so pop it into the middle. And what I want to do is to touch everywhere. And it should, if my calculations are right, be almost bang on 6.4. There we go, 6.4, excellent. All right, I'm gonna make that 6.4, 6.4 centimeters by 6.4 centimeters. There we go, and I don't want any fill, but I do want a stroke. And now this one, it's up to you. I've not really managed to get hold of any kind of definitive measurement for this, um, but I'm gonna try one centimeter to start with, and that looks about right. So about a millimeter in real life. Okay, I can do the whole duplicate thing again. So I wanna duplicate that one straight the way across, and that will go right into the middle. And then again, this one should snap as well, so it's equidistance apart. There we go. Let's pop all those together. And now I want uh, a bit of plastic that goes across the middle. So I'm gonna go and get my rectangular tool and just come down there, just like that. I don't want it to go to the edges and I want it to be uh, one centimeter wide. So at the moment it's on a stroke. And now what I can do is I can select both layers and then go Control or Command E. And because it's that way around, it's going to get rid of the rectangle within the circle there. And that works out just fine. Okay, all we need to do now is do the extrusions just as we did before. So on the lid, let's extrude that one. I'm gonna extrude this one by 1.6 centimeters. The box, we're gonna go by eight centimeters. The knobs, just as before, they are 1.6. Now you'll notice here that we've got, could not complete your request because the path is too complex. So there's too many paths going on there. That's absolutely fine. Just right click, rasterize the layer, and then do it again. And sure enough, this time it's gonna work just fine. There we go. And we want this to be 1.6 centimeters. 1.6 centimeters. There we go. And then the text. De -de 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 text. Wants to be about one centimeter. 9.2 is fine. And then finally we get to the, uh, what I'm gonna call tubes here. Uh, these want to be less than eight centimeters, um, but not a lot less, because we do want to see them come out of the bottom. So let's create that and maybe go to 7.5 centimeters, something like that. 
7.5 centimeters just so they uh, extrude nicely. Okay, bit of housekeeping just as we did before. There we go. And then shift click 3D and then merge 3D layers. There we go. They get all merged into one, hopefully. Cool. All right, starting to take shape already. Okay, let's go top down. Make sure everything's central. And then let's close these up because we don't need to get in there at the moment. Okay, lid again first. So pull the lid forward. And then there we go, 9.6 is what we're looking for. Now you notice that the uh, text I think is hanging out the back. So let's bring that forward just so it doesn't interfere with our 9.59, that was a bad guess. All right, let's go for that text. Oh, we're going to go knobs first. Knobs first to bring those out. There we go. Okay, and then let's bring out the text, which I think maybe is a little bit over extruded. Um, yeah, 9.2 centimeters, we definitely don't want that. Let's go for one centimeter. Okay, there we go. And let's go and get the text. Bring that out, make it just poke out just a little bit. There we go. And now we've got the tubes, so let's turn off the box layer so we can see what's going on with the tubes. There we go. Tubes, bring those forward just a little bit, just so they sit flush with the uh, lid there. There we go. And then we can turn the box back on. Now, I need to put all these together. So again, I'm gonna go for lid. I'm gonna go for box, knob, text and tube. Right click. And sure enough, can't do it. Right click, can do it. There we go. They're all together. All right, let's uh, spin that round, see what it looks like. It's not too bad at all, is it? There we go. Looking good. Looks like an old style brick. Good. All right, now you probably noticed that I went zero, zero, zero here. Um, and that's just to make things easier when I bring them into uh, Project Phoenix in just a little while. Okay, let's go and uh, take that back to zero as well. Good, and I can move that to the ground plane. So it's all nice and square, it's right in the middle, nothing to worry about, good. So we've created a one by one brick, we've created a two by four brick, now it's time to take both of those and put them into a scene in Project Felix. All right, I'll see you in just a second. So here I am in Project Felix. I'm going to create a new project and that's going to open a new project for me with a new ground plane. Now if I wanted to make this a larger image, I can do that here now with the size at the top right hand corner. I'm going to leave it as is, it's a kind of a handy little size just to be messing around in. Okay, let's go to file and import 3D model and I'm going to go to our one by one, there it is, and I'm going to click open. And this is going to come in somewhere, I'm not sure exactly where, can't even see it at the moment. So let's reset these uh, to zero. So we're gonna position this at zero, 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 zero. There it is. There's our one by one block. Let's move this out of the way a little bit. There we go. Because now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go and get my import 3D model and I'm gonna go and get my two by four. There we go, two by four object, open that up. Now we reset the coordinates of this one to zero, 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 um, but it hasn't actually uh, worked this time because we've got this minus 945. So let's change that to zero. And then that'll pop that just there for us as well. So there we go. Good. All right. Now I can rotate this a little bit. I'm going to rotate from the center, which is where I prefer to work from. And I'm going to turn that around and then get the move tool. So V for move and just pop that back. Then I can just click on the one by one brick and bring that forward if I wanted to. And then I could rotate that as well. There we go, let's pop that up on its side. Okay, not sure how well I'm doing, but thankfully 
we can just go here, go 90 degrees, and there we go. We get the move tool and just move that around. Now we can see that the bottom is not showing on the one by one brick. If I bring this up, you can see that it sort of fills it in. That means it's sitting on the ground plane. So I need that just to be sat there. That's good. Move that back. Let's click on this one. Let's make sure that that's on the ground plane. I'm pretty sure it is. There we are. That's good. All right. Now I want to add some materials to this. And earlier on I said I wasn't too worried about materials in Photoshop because I could do that here. And it's so much easier. So onto materials. I can open the one by one brick. I can go and find the material that I want. In this case, let's go for a nice orangey red, red plastic. I can drop that on box. I can drop that on lid. I can drop that on knob. And I can drop that on brick. Done. And what we'll find if I click on brick one by one and rotate this is it does pick up the light really nicely and uh, makes it look really good. Okay, there we go. So open two by four, and this time I'm going to add orange and orange and orange and orange and finally orange. And of course, I could add a different colour to the to the word brick if I wanted to. There we go. If I rotate this round, we should be able to see. Whoops, we're on tubes. Let's close that down. Let's uh, turn this around. Sure enough, there are our tubes in there. It looks great. Now I want to put this in a 3D scene, so I'm going to need a background for this. Could leave it like that, and down the bottom right hand corner here, you may just be able to see, let me just resize my screen here. You should be able to see that we have a representation here of what's going on if we rendered it. So it would look pretty good if we rendered it right now. I could do a low render, which is nice and fast. We can see how it's going, but actually I think this uh, deserves a little bit of a background. It's going to look good though, I think. Okay, I'm going to stop that. And let's go and put a background. File, import images background. I've got one sitting somewhere in my downloads that I got from Adobe Stock. Uh, nope, nope. That's the one. Okay, let's open that. And that's going to open this inside of Project Felix. And it's going to try and work out where the horizon is. Uh, so there we go, off it goes. It's going to work out where the horizon is and thus where the lines converge. There we go, horizon located, align camera to image. There we go. And now our bricks will match the, uh, the perspective of the image, which is absolutely amazing. Look at that, so easy, so easy to do. Okay, I'm going to bring this one forward. There we go. Now I want another version of the 2x4 brick, so as I can see the back really. Um, and to do that, what I'm going to do is I'm going to come up to Edit and I'm going to Copy. Then I'm going to Edit and I'm going to Paste as an instance. So it's not making a new 3D object, it's just using an instance. And if you've used something like uh, Illustrator, you'll already know about instances. So it's exactly the same object, it's just being displayed in a different place. So there we go. Let's rotate that around. There we are, and move that into place. Maybe move that over, whoops. Maybe move that back a bit. There we go, there we are, all right. Now I might want to uh, scale these down a little bit. So let's click on this one and let's scale this one to maybe uh, 0 0.5, 0 0.5, 0 0.5. Okay, and then maybe the other one, we can do that as well. Good. Oops, I seem to have lost it now. And then this one, we also want to go 0 0.5, 0 0.5, 0 0.5. All right. Bring that one along and move it down. And we'll be able to see when we're on the ground plane because it'll start to disappear. There we go. Just nudge that up a little bit. And then this one, you can notice that along, down, there we go. And this one, bring it in, rotate it round. And then move it down. Did we get on the ground plane? There we are. There we are. 
Now because this is an instant, if I decide to change the color of the orange brick, maybe to a green, so if I change it to green here, you'll see that because it's an instance, it's going to change it as well. There we go. Cool. Um, but I can, of course, copy it, edit copy, and edit paste. And then if I move that one out of the way, that nah, was on tubes. Let's go back and uh, edit copy. Edit paste. There we go. Now we'll rotate that one. Okay. There we go. Um, we want that one to change to 90 degrees. But because this one's a copy, we can do anything we like with this one. Actually, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna add some wood. You can see we could add some metal to that one if we wanted to, but uh, I think we're good. Uh, let's go box, lid, text, tubes, knobs. And then we'll move that up. It's down tubes again, and on the knobs again. There we go, let's undo that. And move the whole thing, there we go. And I can pop that one, if I wanted to, on the top of that one. Maybe move it back a little bit. You get the general idea. Okay, let's go and render that out and see what it looks like. Yes, okay, here it comes. In a low quality, it's gonna render this out. We could also do this as a glass, we could do it as wood, we can do it as plastic, anything you like here in Felix. And of course, we can also add other objects to it as well. So if we wanted to put a spring in there or a coil or you name it, you can get it. And um, we could put that in there as well. Okay, I'm gonna just move that over a little bit and then go back and render that and see what that looks like. Okay, looks a bit better perhaps. All right, I'll leave it as is. I didn't need to worry too much. I might though just bring that down to the ground plane and then move it back and along. There we go. Make sure it's on the ground plane. Now what I can do here is I can come to the background. I can say create light from the image. So this is going to make an image based lighting from the background, which gives uh, much better realistic re reflections in the bottom here into the bricks, which would be really cool. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to render this out, I think, one last time. There we go. That's cool. All right, let's render that out, see what it looks like. Yep. Off it goes, and we're going to see some much more sort of natural reflections in these bricks now. Cool. Nice. We could even do is uh, make this one silver and get the reflection of this brick in front of it in the silver one, which I kind of like the idea of that one. It will take a long time to render, but it sounds like it might be a good idea. Anyway. For now though, I'm gonna leave it there. We've got these oversized Lego bricks that are sitting on this counter. Really easy to do. Okay, I'm Eric Renault. Thank you very much for joining me here. Hopefully I'll see you again next time. Bye-bye for now.